Welcome everyone to a very interesting and special edition of Warcry. Today we are trying out a challenge battle from the Monsters and Mercenaries expansion that came out a few weeks back. I had this guy sitting around and I thought it would be fun to try and defeat this one-eyed, one-horned, walking pink stone thrower. For this scenario we are trying out a challenge battle, specifically Colossal Carnage from the Monsters and Mercenaries expansion supplement. For the most part, we will be following all the rules that are laid out for us, but we will be ignoring the spoils section, as we are not using this battle in any campaign type setting. I just thought this would be something interesting some of you folks would like to see. And honestly, I wanted to try and smash some of these iron golems with a big ol' rock. Well, without further ado, let's get into the battle plan and show you these special rules. For starters, we will look at this Saigor and what it can do. The Saigor is considered a monster, and monsters in this expansion have some special abilities as they are laid out on the screen now. Some may even be used in the upcoming battle, that is for you to see later. Monsters can also not use universal abilities, so no onslaught or charge for this Saigor. And finally, monsters can activate three times during a round, but they can only use one action per turn. Now monsters have some other rules, and if they pop up in the battle we will discuss, but I don't want to dilly-dally for 14 minutes. Now for those iron golems, the ones who are hunting down this Saigor beast, they have access to a number of new abilities as well in addition to their universal and faction abilities. These are now called monster hunting abilities. Some of these abilities may come into play during the battle and I will be sure to let you know if any of that occurs. Now we will move on to the challenge before the iron golems. In the battle plan Colossal Carnage, the Iron Golems will be playing as the challenger and the Saigor will be the adversary. According to the setup, the Iron Golems cannot exceed three times the Saigor's point value, so their army point value must be 885 or under. For their warband, they have selected the Ogre Breacher and the Iron Legionary with Bolas for their hammer squad, the shield contains the Dominar and a couple Iron Legionaries, and finally the dagger holds the Perfector and the Drillmaster. For the terrain, we flip three terrain cards. Then the adversary or the Saigor monster selects which one we will have battle on. Think of it as, as the Saigor's home turf. This is where he lives and hangs out with his friends. Out of the three cards flipped, he has chosen this one. Here is the battlefield all set up. For the deployment, it proceeds as normal. We will flip a card and then get Deadly Gambit. We will have a roll-off, the Iron Golems being the red die, win the roll-off, and decide that they will be on the blue starting points. It looks like in round two, the Hammer and Shield Squad will enter the fray for the Iron Golems. No need to flip a victory card for this battle. To achieve victory in this game, it is simple. Whoever takes down every fighter in the opponent's warband wins. And for the twist, well, we have a lot to do here. Now we will travel over to the special rules. First off, I've divided out all the Climate and Magical Phenomena twist cards and shuffled them in. And then we draw. We start off with the Calm card. Now the Iron Golems have decided to strike, and use this twist card for the duration of the match. Having that rock not being thrown in the first round or two could be helpful. So with all the rules and other junk out of the way, we'll move on to the game. Age of Sigmar Warcry. The Saigor versus the Iron Golems. Just like any other game of Warcry, we start out by rolling initiative and wild dice. For the Iron Golems, they roll up two doubles and a couple singles. For the Saigor, the big monster rolls up a triple, a double, and a single. The Iron Golems have the initiative and decide not to use their wild die this round, and the Saigor will do nothing as well. With the rolling complete, we move on to the Perfector. To start off, the Hammer Guy will travel over this deadly terrain and use the double for the Rush ability. This grants him a little bit more movement, and when moving over those wooden spikes, he does take a point of damage. But at least he gets closer to that big ol' monster. Next is the first Saigor activation. This massive beast will use his activation to move into base contact with the Perfector and use the double ability Rip and Tear Masonry on the stone obstacle next to him, preparing to chuck a rock next activation. The Drillmaster is next. She will copy her Iron Golem pal and rush up and over the deadly terrain. But unlike her friend, she is agile enough and avoids getting poked. She runs the rest of her activation forward to get in her 3 inch range of the Saigor, but out of his 2 inch melee range. Onto the Saigor for his second activation. As he shakes because I bumped the table, the Saigor will use the monster ability Drag and Pull on the Drillmaster and yanks her into melee range. This ability also damages on a 4 up and she suffers 3 damage. And that was just the ability for this activation. 
The Saigor will now attack into the Drillmaster, hitting on fours and on a critical hit deals 8 total damage, but this attack does not finish her off. So for his final activation, the Saigor will attack into the Drillmaster one more time, and this time just devastates her. This will end battle round 1. It was an unfortunate starting point for the Iron Golem's Dagger Squad. They lost the Drillmaster and the Perfector poked himself. But in the next round, the Shield and Hammer squads will be there to back them up. On to battle round 2. The Iron Golems roll 66 and get a double and a bunch of singles at their disposal. For the Saigor, the monster rolls up a couple doubles and a pair of singles. The Iron Golems have the initiative and recall both warbands saved their wild dice from last round. They will make an additional two doubles for a total of four, and the Saigor will turn both of his doubles into triples. The Iron Golems will now place out their reserve forces and get prepared to charge into the rampaging Saigor. Before the Perfector gets destroyed by the Saigor, he will use the Onslaught ability and attack twice into the Saigor. Hitting on fours, the Saigor only takes four damage. A lot more damage to go. Next is the Saigor, and for his first activation, he will simply attack back into the Perfector right in front of him. He slams down, hitting on fours, and deals, you know, a modest 12 points of damage. Back over to the Iron Golem's turn, a Legionnaire will go ahead and double move forward to get in base contact of the Saigor and end his turn. The Saigor will then begin his second activation and take that boulder he picked up last round and slam it down into the Legionnaire. Each four up is five total damage, but the boulder completely whiffs. In his frustration, he will use his activation attacking in the Perfector, and this time he takes him down. To follow up the Saigor's rampage, another Legionnaire will move up and help out his buddy nearby. Now the Saigor will start his last activation. He will use the Dragon Maul ability on the nearby Legionnaire. With two dice to roll, he pushes through three damage. Then to follow up, he will attack into the Iron Golem, hitting on fives and misses with everything. On next to the Iron Golems. To speed things up a bit, I will move the rest of the fighters as a single turn. Those that were too far to get into base contact with the Saigor use the rush ability to get into melee. This will end battle round two. The Saigor managed to take out the Perfector from battle, but did a terrible job taking down a Legionnaire. Can the Iron Golems take advantage of this blunder? We shall see what happens in battle round three. As always, 66s are rolled. The Iron Golems get two doubles and a couple singles. The Saigor then rolls and gets one double. For Wild Dice, the Saigor has the initiative and elects to not spend his Wild Die, and the Iron Golems take one of their doubles and turn it into a triple. This then begins the round for the Saigor. He will first re-boulder up and tear another piece of stone off the obstacle nearby. After this, he will use his activation to attack into the Dominar leader in front of him. Hitting on fours, the Saigor lands a critical hit, sending an 8 damage. Next, the turn goes to the Dominar. First things first, he will attack twice into the Saigor. Hitting on threes, he deals out 8 total damage. But before his turn ends, he uses the triple for the Inspiring Presence ability, giving the Ogre Breacher a turn before the Saigor can go. The Ogre Breacher is next and is looking to do some damage. He ramps up his attacks using the Onslaught ability and swings in two attacks. Hitting on threes, out of the mass potential of damage, he only deals out eight. But that is nothing to scoff at. The Saigor finally can start his second activation, and he is going to attack again into the Dominar. Hitting on fours, he sends an eight damage, but the Dominar is still standing. The Legionnaire with the Bolas is next. He lets it fly off at the Saigor's rump. Hitting on fives here, the Legionnaire does enough damage to send the Saigor down into the next damage bracket. The third and final activation is next for the Saigor, and he just wants to finish off the Dominar. He just needs to squeeze in a little bit of damage, and it finally works out for him. For the sake of brevity, both of the final Legionaries will attack into the Saigor at the same time. Four total attack actions go through, hitting on fives, and the little guys manage to send out eight total damage. Not bad at all. This ends Battle Round 3. The Saigor only has 20 health left, and the Iron Golems are looking pretty good. Will the Saigor rally back this battle round, or bite the dust? Let's move on to battle round 4. The Iron Golems roll first. They end up getting two doubles and a couple singles. The Saigor rolls as well and gets a triple and a few singles. He has the initiative. Despite having two wild dice this round, the Saigor will only use one of them to make a quad. 
the Iron Golems will make a triple five with their Wild Eye. So now we start off with the Saigor. Right away, he will use the Quad 2 ability, Soul Eater, and attempt to damage those around him and regain some health. On a 4 up, the Saigor deals 3 damage to a specific fighter and regains that much health. Starting with the Legionary, the damage is successful. The other Legionary, the Piercing Eye does not affect him. The same goes for the Ogre Breacher, but the Legionary with the Bolas is overcome with pain. The One-Eyed Monster regains 6 points of health as well. After this, the Saigor will then attack into the Legionary, who has been damaged. Hitting on 5s, the Saigor is able to take out another Iron Golem. Next is the Ogre Breacher, and he has a chance to take down the Saigor. He will use the insane triple ability Gutting Strike, which if he lands a critical hit, can deal out 18 total damage. He will attack in, hitting on 3s. Unfortunate for him, does not land a critical, but still does a whopping 12 damage. The Saigor is next and is grasping at straws here. He is attacking into the Legionary, hoping to land a couple critical hits, and only deals out a few points of damage. Still alive, the Legionary is going to attack back into the Saigor for both of his activations. Hitting on 5s, he hammers in a whopping 7 damage. That is really good for the weak fighter. The Saigor is next and only has 7 points of health left. He will once again attack into the annoying Legionary. He hits, but only pushes through some minor damage. It now moves to the final Iron Golem, the man with the Bolas. He will use the Onslaught ability, and swing in with 8 total attacks. He hits on 5s, and deals exactly 7 damage, which is enough to finish off the Saigor. The Saigor has been defeated, granting victory to the Iron Golem's Warband. Overall, I enjoyed battling a gargantuan monster against a small warband. It gives a change of pace to the game that is enjoyable, and in some cases, even faster than your standard game of Warcry. I will say before I started the game, the abilities the monster hunters have are significant, and the fact that it was around 9 activations to roughly 1.5 activations really skewed the chances of the Saigor actually winning the game. Now I have only played one game with this new expansion, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is the case with the other challenge battles as well. I hope you all enjoyed this battle, and I will advise you to be on the lookout for more battle reports and Warcry content in the future. I want to thank you all for watching. And of course, happy gaming.